Now you may have noticed when we brought in this anime head, all of a sudden our document size got bigger. Let's talk briefly about documents. So what we're going to do is we're going to close out of ZBrush, hit no, go ahead and reload ZBrush. Let's go ahead and hit the comma key and we're back to our regular ZBrush. We have a gradient on our document and you know what, let's go over here and we'll grab this PolyMesh 3D or if it's you don't see that, just click on the palette icon, grab the PolyMesh 3D, drag it down on your document, go into edit mode. Now when I'm just in ZBrush and I need something quick and I don't feel like dragging on a primitive and then hitting make PolyMesh 3D, I'll usually grab the star. This star is already a PolyMesh 3D. It doesn't have primitive options. It's already just polygons. So this will usually be my default mesh. But now let's talk a little bit about document. So we've already explained you're going to drag out your object onto your document or your canvas. You're going to go into edit mode and now you can start sculpting on your object. Usually in ZBrush, that's going to be the order of operations. That's usually what you're going to do. If you ever accidentally go out of edit mode or you accidentally hit T and you say switch, that'll allow you to switch to a different tool, but it's also going to drop that tool onto your document. And by that I mean, if you try and drag out another tool, it's going to stay there until you hit Control N to clear your canvas. So whenever you have an object, you go into edit mode, you move and tumble around, and then you go out of edit mode, it's going to drop it to your canvas. You can drag out another one, and it doesn't change the tool. The tool is still itself. It's all it is. But this is a representation of your tool that's been captured to the canvas. Now what you can do is you can go into edit mode, and if you ever want to drop this tool on purpose, you can, hey, you can say Shift S, and that'll store a snapshot of this tool. So now I can move this tool over. I can tumble around to the side. I can hold down Shift. I can hit Shift S, I can move it over here, I can do a three-quarter shot, hit Shift S. So I'm basically dropping this tool onto my canvas. Again, if I want to get rid of all these, just hit Control N to clear my canvas, and now I'm left with my editable tool. But going back to document, you may notice this document's a little bit small. It's giving us plenty of room around the sides and the top. And we also have a gradient, which doesn't really bother me when I'm usually working. However, when I'm recording video, it kind of adds unnecessary compression overhead. So I tend to change this and I'll, I'll walk you through that just in case you want to do that as well. But if you don't mind the gradient, go ahead and leave it. All of the document settings or the canvas settings like we've been talking about, you can drop things to your canvas. You're basically navigating around in your canvas while you're working on your tool. All of those settings are up here in the document menu. Now, if I want to have this document menu open, again, I can just go in here to the document menu, grab this white dot, drag it over here, and now I've got my document and my Z tool. Now, this is getting a little bit long to kind of navigate in, so usually what I'll do, because the Z tool is such an intensive menu and it has a lot of things on it, I'll go ahead and double click this little divider over here, and any other menus that I want open, I'll just open them on this side. So I'm going to take this document, I'm going to click this white arrow and just close it. And then this brush menu that may be by default over in here, I'm just going to click this white dot and then replace that with this document menu. So again, this document is a little bit small. It doesn't quite fill up all of this area. And that's actually okay. If we click our comma key, let's go to our tool menu. Let's double click the dog Z tool. We'll hit the comma key. And if we ever zoom really far in on our dog to where the only way we can tumble with ZBrush navigation is to go over here where there's a little bit of space and then, oops, oh no. Now, no matter where I tap, I have to sculpt on my dog. I can't navigate anymore. Of course, we can use right-click navigation and you can right-click navigate or hold down Alt or Control to zoom out so you're pretty safe. However, if you like classic navigation, and again, you can take your draw size and make it bigger or smaller, or tap S on your keyboard, and then change your draw size there. It's like, I want to sculpt, but I also want to move around my character. There's a couple of things you can do now. Because the document's a little smaller, you can actually go out here, and wherever you click in here, it'll rotate, and then you can hold down Alt and drag out. So essentially, this document space will allow you to navigate in your scene. Now you'll also notice over here along the side, you do have a move, a zoom, and a rotate. 
So if at any point you want to use these buttons just to click and drag on, you can. I will caution you against having these as a crutch. I would get used to navigating in your viewport just for speed. You don't want to be stuck over here using these options for ZBrush navigation. In fact, when you get to custom UI, I'm going to remove these just because I never use them, and I would probably suggest that you don't either. So if you use ZBrush with both sides open, which I generally do, having a little bit of empty space around here isn't that big a deal. However, it might start feeling a little cramped, or if you double click these dividers and you don't have that other menu open, there's a lot of wasted space in here. So there's two things I like to do. I'm gonna go up here to document, or since I work with this divider open, I'm gonna go ahead and have this open. And that way I don't have to keep clicking the document menu open, I can just have it open right here. And I wanna fill in my entire working space with a document. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure W size is turned on, and I'm gonna click new document. It's gonna ask me if I wanna save my changes. No, I don't need to save my document changes. And when I do that, it makes that document exactly the size of this open area. In fact, if I close this divider and I go up here to document W size new, it'll go ahead and fill this area in. Essentially, when you're working in ZBrush, you want as much document real estate as you can handle. Now, you can go in here to document and you can type in an 8K by 8K document, you don't want to do that. It's going to waste a lot of resources. It's going to be a lot of wasted pixels in your scene. And we'll get to reasons why you may want to resize your document later, possibly. But for now, if you're just sculpting in ZBrush, generally speaking, you want your document to take up as much room as possible. And again, because I like to work with two menu dividers open, I'm going to go in here to Document, W Size New, and that'll give me a document exactly this big. Now I also like to drop this range down. So I'm gonna take this range and just drag it to zero. That way when I'm making videos and compressing them, I don't have a gradient in my scene that's gonna take up unnecessary space. If you like that range, feel free to change the range, the center, the rate. And in fact, if you wanna change the background color, just click on back and then drag in your document and that'll give you a brand new color. So you can go down here to your color wheel and you can choose any color. Now I'm just gonna click and drag and sample this button color. Take that range down to zero. Or you know what, maybe this interface color here. That seems about right. And let's say this is the document I prefer to use every time I open up ZBrush. Just like when we went into the material and said save as startup material, underneath your document you have a save as startup doc. So go ahead and click that button and then every time you load up ZBrush, this will be your default document. Now you may be saying, well, now that I have a document covering all of this, what if I go back in, so we have our dog subtool selected, or tool selected, go back into edit mode, and let's zoom in real close so we don't have any open space. So again, I can sculpt over here, and now I don't have any gray area to navigate in. What you're gonna notice, ZBrush put in an action line around your object. That's going to allow you to go over here, and you can still use this little space around your object here, to navigate in if you want to use the ZBrush Classic navigation. Of course, you still have these available to you if you leave these buttons in your interface or right-click navigation, which we went over earlier. Now, again, we have the safe action zone in our document.